My name is Bill Napoli. I'm the owner of Motion Unlimited Museum. We're celebrating our 49th year of being in business. The thing that a lot of people don't realize is that my car history goes back in Rapid City in Western South Dakota many, many years, 60 years at least. And so when you get that old, you got a lot of history, you know a lot of stuff that happened in the past. The jewel that I'm standing in front of uh, is one of those parts of history that I was aware of. Knew this car when I was a kid, stood next to it when I was a kid at Bacon Park at the car show, loved this car, never forgot about it. Come 1964, the car disappeared. I kind of forgot about it, life went on, got my own business going, building cars of all kinds. Uh, and lo and behold, the car shows up in my driveway one day in the condition you can see in the, on the front of the show card that it was just junk. It was destined to be destroyed, crushed, sent to the scrapyard. And I said, I can fix that car. And after three weeks of negotiations, I bought the car. I restored it with the help of some really good people. Uh, it took us nine months of 15-hour days, seven days a week. Uh, and I'm not kidding a bit about that. My poor little Peggy Sue, I'd have to send her home one day a week because she was so tired she couldn't see straight. But it was the love of this car and the love of the history that this car had from Western South Dakota. This car was famous. It was in many car shows. It was in many national magazines. Uh, it was written up in all kinds of different publications of, of different uh, rod, uh, rod and custom uh, clubs and things like that. The car's pretty famous. Of course, a lot of those little guys are not with us anymore, but that's beside the point. When I started this project, I didn't realize how much of an archaeologist I was. And then it, just, it dawned on me, I'm doing what an archaeologist does, because once I bought the car, I had to go back and talk to all these guys that I could find that knew something about the car, because I had no pictures, I had no diagrams. All I had was verbal communications telling me, well, this, we did this, yes, we did that. Uh, yeah, this, well, we did this, and it didn't work. And come to find out about half of it wasn't true and half of the other half was completely made up. So we had to sift through all of that down to the point where I talked to a couple guys that really knew about the car, gave me directions as to what I needed to do to turn it back into the Jewel and you're looking at the Jewel today. This is the first car show for the Jewel in the last 50 years that, it's, that it disappeared from the face of, of all of us car people. The last 50 years. And myself and several other people have brought it back here. And it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be here with the Council Car Club, the Council of the Cobblestones Car Show. This, the last car show this car was in, in 1963, was a Council of the Cobblestone Car Show. And so we're back, and here it is, and hopefully this car will remain a piece of history from now until whenever. We're taking a moment to look at the interior of this car. A local upholstery guy that's retired now did this for me because he was really good friends with Jim Nugel. Uh, he was a guy that originally built the car in 1960, but look at the style of this car. That is so dated. That's what this car had in it in 1960. People just don't, don't do this anymore. I mean, it, it, it's just so out of sight and, and so unbelievable that I think it just adds so much to the beauty and the age of this car to where it's come from and where it is now. And what you're doing right now is you're looking, you're taking a look at a page in the past. That's what you're looking at in this interior. Because if you go back to the old magazines in the 1960s, you'll see the magazine is full of cars like this. When you walk around this car show today, and there's 200 cars here, you will not find an upholstery uh, system like this. So this is stepping back into the past in this upholstery. What you're looking at now is the back of the car. And all of this, all of this pieces here, the taillight assemblies, this is all hand formed. The original car just had a little tail light right here and then that was flat, the bumper, whatever. But this was all completely hand formed and made out of lead. Dick Nugels, Jim's brother Dick did this, built all of this back here. And I've just rebuilt it and installed new tail lights and then I put LED lights all the way across so it all lights up. It's just a really nice touch. But you never saw anything like that in South Dakota. This is this is right straight out of California. This is. This is my California edition, right? I like to call it that. And so it's just a really unusual and I think very striking uh, part of the car. What you're looking on that roof is another custom feature of this car. Uh, that's a handmade scoop and it's modeled after George Barris who came up with the first scoop above a windshield. He, George Barris first guy built one of those and Dick thought it would look very cool on this car. So that's all handmade. That's all leaded in by hand uh, and that 
the little teeth and everything are come out of a Pontiac. And so it's just a really nice custom touch uh, for this car. These are called cruiser skirts. Uh, they came out of California, California style also back in the 60s. And they're just a real nice, sleek fender skirt that really, you know, really uh, gives the car appearance being very low to the ground. But if you'll notice, this part of the skirt almost matches the curve of the body. And that's just beautiful. And my good friend Mike the Greek just gave me a terrible time about putting those on there. And then he fell in love with them after I got them on there because they just really add to the, to the low stance of the car and the width. And so I think they really add to it. What you're looking at is a completely handmade custom front end. These are 59 Chevy headlight assemblies. That's a tube grill. That's all handmade. This is all leaded in. There's no Bondo in here. This is all handmade with lead, which is a lost art. They haven't done any, there hasn't hardly been any lead work done for probably 40 or 50 years. And this is just beautiful workmanship. But there's a story behind this grill because when I first got this car and started working on it, my mind was clicking as to where I was going to get the parts to build this grill because I didn't have it and I didn't know what happened to it. Of course, nobody knew what happened to it because the car had been junked and scrapped for so long. Nobody knew. So one Saturday, I'm getting a little tired of working on the car. I go out in the backyard, taking a break, and I got an old bus back there completely full of old car parts. In my business, you got to have something like that with your own parts. So I'm thinking, gee, I wonder if there's anything in that bus that I could use on this car. So I, now this bus is completely full of parts. So I'm sifting through these parts and I'm moving this and moving that. Clear in the back of the bus, I see this grill. And I'm thinking, geez, I wonder if I can use that for the, for the jewel. It looks like pieces might work, you know? So I go back there and I take it out and I'm looking at it and think nothing of it. Took it in the shop, cleaned it up. Said, yeah, it looks, you know, looks good, like I can use parts of it. Come in Sunday morning, I polished it all up, set it up in there. The original brackets for the grill were there. The original brackets on the grill were there. It bolted in. This was the original grill that came out of the jewel. And it was in my bus for over 30 years for a car that had been parked and scrapped 50 years ago. Now you tell me there's no God. Just tell me. I mean, how could that have, what, first of all, what made me go in that bus? Second of all, how is it that I saw that grill back there amongst all that junk? God works in strange ways.